Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Do Third Parties Destroy Democracy? Arrow's Impossibility Theorem and the Problem of the Third Party. In this video, we're going to be looking at May's Theorem, or the case for the two-party system. Now, none of the voting systems that we've examined so far met all of the desirability criteria that we outlined. If you haven't checked out those voting systems or those desirability criteria, check out the rest of this series. However, that does not mean that no system will. We've yet to prove that. What I want you to do now is imagine that instead of looking at three candidates or four or five or six candidates, we're looking at two. When looking at only two candidates, so long as there are an odd number of voters and no ties are allowed on the preference sheets, all of the systems that we have looked at so far will declare the same winner. Other than dictatorship, of course. We will describe this system, which all of these systems kind of collapse into, as majority rules. Since it will always pick the candidate with the majority of first place votes. This system will also meet all of the desirability criteria that we have laid out. That's cool. This system not only represents all of the other systems, but it meets all of our desirability criteria. So it seems like a pretty good choice. But let's look at the first claim just to prove that this is the case. That all of our systems, other than dictatorship, will pick the majority winner with two options, an odd number of voters, and no ties allowed in the ballots. Take a look at this set of ballots. I'm not going to prove that all of these are going to fall in line, but... Let's look at this and see if we can understand this. So first past the post, Buckland, Instant Runoff, and Coombs Rule always are going to pick a majority winner if there is one right away. And so they're going to pick Clinton. And because majority rules will always pick the majority winner, all of these systems must always pick the majority winner. Because she has a majority of first place votes. Board account gives Clinton three points and Trump two. And Nauru gives Clinton four and Trump three and a half. You'll also notice that both of these systems will always pick the majority winner because there's no way for someone to have fewer first place votes when there's only two types of votes you can get and have more points total. And there's only one face-off for Condorcet to judge, and Clinton wins that face-off. And since that face-off is just the question of who has a majority, then once again, Condorcet is going to pick the majority winner. The point here is that all the systems we've looked at so far, excluding dictatorship, will act like majority rules when only given two candidates. But now, here's the more important claim. What about our desirability criteria? Let's look at the same scenario. The domain and range is not restricted, assuming that we only say there are really two candidates. We're not artificially restricting our domain or range based on a chosen set of candidates. We're only choosing between two candidates. Either can win, we could have a set of voters, everyone votes for Trump, and we could have a set of voters, everyone votes for Clinton. And the voters can vote as they like. There's no restrictions on voter C has to vote for Clinton. There's always going to be a winner. We have an odd number. Always there's going to be at least three people in favor of one candidate. No one can improve their standing by moving down or make their position worse by moving up. So it's monotone. We can't, if Trump were to move up on B, C, or D, he would win. And if Clinton were to move down on B, C, or D, she would lose. If everyone prefers one candidate to another, that candidate not only will be chosen, but will unanimously get every single first place vote. So it passes the Pareto condition. There will always be a Condorcet winner. And that will always be the choice, because there's only one relationship to look at. There's only one pairing, the one-on-one -on -one relationship we're looking at here. And there can't be any irregular alternatives, or irrelevant alternatives, rather, because we're only looking at two candidates. So we can't have some third-party candidate moving around and changing the positions of those candidates. There's only two candidates, so there's no irrelevant alternatives. The system, clearly, is not a dictatorship. We might have 
fewer choices in this case, but when we only have two choices, our system passes all of the criteria we've looked at. So May's theorem is going to go as follows. Kenneth May, because for some reason all the significant theorists in voting theory are named Kenneth, has a theorem which claims that majority rule is the only system which will pass May's criteria. Always a winner, unrestricted domain, monotonicity, a version of non-dictatorship which claims that all voters must be treated the same, and neutrality. If everyone switches their preferences, the group preference changes. So that's if everyone switches all of their preferences. So if you were had Clinton on Trump and, top and Trump second, you would switch those and have Trump on top and Clinton second for everyone, then the group preference would change. Basically, there's no preferential treatment for a particular candidate. This might be seen in a realistic situation if you had a yes or no vote and needed 60% to pass, because then if the vote was split 50-50, if you switched all the yeses and noes, the no would win no matter what you voted. Okay? Now, the case for the two-party system. So, if we want a system that fulfills all of the criteria that we've listed out, the only thing we can do is to abandon multi-party democracy and only make decisions between two choices. Because that's the only way that it's going to be fair. This, in combination at least with the claims of arrows and possibility theorem, are going to get us there. You might say, wait, maybe I can devise a system that's going to meet all of these desirability criteria and have the possibility of a third party. Well, stay tuned for the next video and your hopes shall be dashed. But the proponent of the third party might claim that, in fact, having more than two candidates allowed should be a desirability criterion as well. That should be part of our desirability questions that we're looking at. And this would mean, in combination with errors and possibility, that no system is going to satisfy all of our desirability criteria, and we must pick and choose between them. The advocate of the third party might still have a case if they could show that having an extra candidate would be more important than one of the desirability criteria. In the next couple videos, we are going to look first at Arrow's Impossibility Theorem to demonstrate the claim that if we have more than two choices, there's nothing that's going to pass all of these criteria, and then to look at some alternative criteria that the proponent of the third party might offer to defend that system. That was May's theorem. Next up, we'll look at Arrow's Impossibility Theorem, and finally, avoiding Arrow's Impossibility. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.